So today we're gonna to do a test of both long range Model Ys. We have a 2023 and a 2026. They're both at 100%. We're going to be driving through the same conditions, so I'm curious to see what we get. We'll keep you guys updated throughout the trip. Okay, so yesterday we made it about 350 miles from Florida, from mid-Florida, up to Savannah, Georgia area. And then today we have that same distance to go home. Um, yesterday I would say the one big thing we noticed, both cars we had set to the same settings. They're both loaded uh, with about the same amount of material. We're moving some stuff around. And they were both at the same state of charge when we left at 100% from Florida. Um, the one thing I would notice is this one has 21,000 miles approximately. This has about 2,000 miles, so 10% of what this one has gone through. But the degradation usually happens heavily within the first 20 to 50,000 miles. So we definitely noticed that on this vehicle. I think when this came out, these were rated at 330 miles in range. They got in trouble. Tesla got in trouble with the EPA, moved it down to 310. We're seeing about just under 300 on a full charge on that. So. That was interesting and it definitely held true with this. Like there's definitely some degradation that we've noticed. The one thing that's cool is the new Model Y definitely is probably, uh, you know, I, I saw efficiency statistics from them about three to 5% more efficient than the previous model. Um, this one we were noticing about 10% increase in efficiency. So over a, a, a statistically significant number of miles, couples of hundreds running the same FSD, both in standard, running at around the same speed, running HVAC at the same temperature between the two cars, we noticed about 20 to 25 watt hours per mile uh, reduction in, in energy usage on the, the new Model Y over the old one. So that was interesting. Um, that's been pretty consistent. The one thing I would point out though, is that between the new Model Y on, on Hardware 4 and the old Model Y on Hardware 3, you really, really, really notice a difference in terms of um, not just FSD compliance and how well it does, but you also notice a huge difference in um, how it keeps up. I would say that um, on hardware three, FSD in hurry is like full self-driving on hardware four set to chill mode. Um, so that was the thing that we noticed. No matter how much we tried to stay up with each other, this one would always end up falling way, way, way back. Um, and so we just set both to standard and we kind of gave up at a certain point and said we're just going to get there when we get there and we'll rendezvous at that point. This was really great. This hit 255 kilowatts of peak charging on a level three charger. Um, so still charging strong. That's been awesome. Um, this we didn't really get a, a chance to test that because someone pulled in right next to me when we started to charge. But I assume it's fine as well. Um, Carson, is there anything I missed that I should cover? I think. That was all the highlights. I'm really impressed by how well this is doing in terms of efficiency. It looks like it's actually getting the numbers they claimed and that's at those highway speeds. Um, I wasn't expecting to see that. So we'll keep you guys updated on the last leg of the trip, but that's it. Both of these uh, fly plows uh, have done pretty good making it this far and we'll see how we go with another hot day on the way back to mid-Atlantic today.